Hi, I'm Christoph and welcome to Quixotry Workshop. I don't know if you also uh, experience mosquitoes like I do. I hate those little buggers. They are, especially in summertime, they're all over. If you don't keep your windows shut, then you have mosquitoes all around you all the time. So today I want to show you how you can cheaply and very easily make a uh, your own mosquito nets um, to put in your window frames. It's very simple um, and it's very cheap to tell you what you'll need to do this. So first of all, you'll need some wood, some wood strips. I bought these wood strips from my local hardware. It's nice and thin. It's not heavy. It's Maranti. I'll need uh, for the window I'm going to do today in my bathroom, uh, I'll need um, only this one length of about two meters. <clears throat> You'll also need some uh, weather strip. It's a south adhesive polyurethane strip that uh, if you peel back, it's got glue on the one side and it's spongy and it seals. And then as far as the netting goes, you can buy this also from your local hardware shop. It's a fiber, it's not metal, it's a, it's, a, it's a soft mosquito netting that's made out of glass fiber and plastic. Some magnets. Uh, so these magnets are the ones that you get uh, for labels. Um, to put labels on clothes. This is a, a, a set of a magnet with a little metal plate. And then lastly, in terms of um, some disposables and hardware, and uh, you'll need some... So this is the window, um, it's a small window, uh, it's in the bathroom. I would like to keep this window open um, most of the time for ventilation. I don't want the, the mozzies to, to come in, so um, I'm measuring uh, the area, the, the biggest area. Um, in my case, uh, the frame is going to be 560 high and I'm measuring the total, to, the total width of the frame and 550 millimeters wide. Um, there's some burglar proofing also that's uh, going to make it more challenging but I'll show you how to deal with that. So now we have the measurements. Um, let's start making this. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the, the wood because um, this wood is it's, it's rough and it's got um, uh, like little hairs on it and fibers and it also is the wrong color. It's much too light for, for the rest of the wood. Um, so I'm going to give it a light sand and uh, some stain and I'll show you in a moment. After doing some measurements and um, realizing that my material is a bit short for to make a frame of 560 by 560 I remeasured the window and saw that I can actually make the frame uh, 
540 millimeters, 540 high as well as 540 wide. Um, and if my two upper pieces are 540 long, um, and this wood is, uh, let's see, it is 30, 31 millimeters in width. That means I have to subtract 62 millimeters minus 62 from the, the horizontal pieces. So <clears throat> in my case, it doesn't matter if I decide to turn the frame this way, if I want my, my longer pieces to be um, the horizontal pieces to be the longer pieces because my end uh, measurement will be 540 by 540. I can decide that later, but for now, all I need is to subtract 62 millimeters from 540 to get the length of the two pieces that will fit inside. And that is 478 millimeters. So I need two pieces of four, 478 millimeters and two pieces of 540 millimeters. Let's see, um, 540. 540. In order for to stain this, uh, I'm going to mess on my workbench. Um, got a piece of scrap cardboard. Whenever you cut wood, then um, it always ends up being a little bit rough. We cut it and just to get rid of all those those little things there, those fibers. Just lightly sand it without making the, the edges round. So we're ready to start staining them. Um, got my wood stain here and I have this small piece of off cut that I want to use as a test. So I'm just putting some stain on. We'll leave that, leave that to dry. Now that it's dry, um, you can see the difference in, in the color. It will go slightly darker when I, when I um, seal this with a sanding sealer. Um, but you can always give it a second coat if you, if you want to go a little bit darker. Every time you put the stain on, it will go slightly like a tone darker. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with the stain, it's not gonna be too dark. I can always give it a second coat. So I'm gonna go ahead and stain all these pieces. Now you may ask, uh, why do I stain the pieces before I glue everything together? Um, the reason for this is it's easier for me to, to put it together when the, when the parts are already stained. Otherwise I have to be careful um, not to, to over stain on the, on the corners uh, where the two parts meet each other. Um, and this way also I can get rid of all the, the unwanted um, fibers that will result from 
from the staining, it, the, the, the wood fibers will rise again every time I add the stain and then I'll give it a light sand and stain it again. Um, it's easier when these parts are separate to do this um, other than having a frame that's already assembled. So I'm going to leave these to dry properly. Um, if you're in a hurry, you can always put it outside if it's a sunny day in the sun or use a heat gun to make the, uh, the drying process faster. Now that they've uh, dried a bit, um, I think I do want to give it a second, second stain. Just quickly give it a light sand. You can see, if you look closely, you can see there's, there's these um, little hairy fibers. That immediately <clears throat> it's quite much darker and the secret of getting an even stain is to work quickly and and wet while it's wet you go to the other sides then it won't leave ugly marks and stains okay and now we can leave these dry out. I'm going to put them on their sides like this. So the next step is when these are dry I'm not going to uh, seal them immediately. I'm going to start assembling the frame um, with, the, with the glue gun and then um, I'll show you exactly how we're going to set that up. Now that we have all the pieces stained and um, sanded enough. I'm happy with it. Um, so what I want to do is I want to reinforce these corners with dowels. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these um, skewer sticks um, as dowels. They're thin. It's just to give a little bit of strength on the corners. Um, so what I what I'm doing here is I'm just marking where the wood ends and now if I turn these two pieces this way like that then um, there's marks for me to know exactly where the wood's gonna be glued on and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in my vise yeah, and drill two holes right there and on this side uh, matching holes on these head ends of these two pieces and then um, that would be two dowels on each corner would be sufficient um, to reinforce that. So let's start drilling. 
So because it's such a small scale and so thin, um, I'm not going to worry about measuring. I can measure with my eye. I'm just eyeing it. I'm just drilling all of them roughly the same distance apart and centering it. And then I'm just going to do matching the distance between them and So there you have the holes on this side and like that on both ends and then all I need to do is I need to make sure that these dowels is not too long um, so I drilled my, my holes a certain length If I cut them all that size, it will be fine. I'm just going to use snips to, to do this because it's easy. And we can just dry fit everything to make sure that they're all the right length. There you go. It's actually already strong enough even without the glue. The next step, gluing of the frame. Right, my glue gun is all heated up and ready. And all the parts are here. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of glue on the dowels. And just pushing it in, twisting it. I go around. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm making sure that there's not any unwanted excess glue around. And also, um, don't make the mistake of putting dowels into this side as well. So just to avoid any confusion, rather put all your dowels on the, the, two, the two parts um, that's got the holes on the heads. Then you won't make the mistake. So I finished gluing uh, all four uh, joints. Um, I just put some hot glue there and pressed them together one by one and everything fits nicely and the whole frame is rigid and I'm very happy with the outcome. So for the next step we're going to put the mosquito netting on. Now that we have the frame ready and it's all square you can choose the side you want to be in the front you turn it over like that take a piece of your mosquito netting make sure there's no holes or flaws so just going to use scissors to cut it roughly. And as soon as the, you're happy with the size, you can start with the hot glue gun and you work your way from a corner like this. If you go through piece of wood or something and just scrape the glue flat and keep it under tension Be careful not to spill any glue over on this side of your frame uh, so that you, this is the back, you're not going to see this when the frame is up. So this side is fixed, so you've got one side fixed now. Now, the best way of getting a nice uh, tight um, screen is to do a second, a second side that's 90 degrees to your first one. Don't, don't do the opposite side immediately, it's going to have creases. You can pull it a little bit tight on that corner and just make sure that you don't overstretch it and, and make it...
I'm pulling it straight and I see no creases or folds and I'm releasing the tension there a little bit but I'm keeping the tension on that side and I'm just going on putting a line of hot glue over this side using my piece of wood and just lightly scraping it flattening the hot glue while keeping tension until the the glue sets in about 30 seconds so I'm keeping the pressure on here and now the third side I'm doing is going to be this side and I don't know if you can see on the video that as I pull it like this I can actually get rid of these crease these these folds and creases so I'm, I'm doing the third side I'm, I'm not doing in one go I'm doing small sections and I'm making sure that each section as I move along is is without any creases in this area and the last side I'm going to start in the middle I'm pulling it so that I can have it straight I'm just putting a little blob there and then I'm working my way to the corner And I'm doing it I can actually pull it towards the corner now and finish it up because I can see there's no creases
There you go. There's a frame with a screen. The next step is to seal it. Um, I've got some sanding sealer here. Just going to put a layer on. You don't have to watch paint dry. Um, I'm gonna go to the next step. So now it's got a layer um, of sanding sealer which I'm leaving to dry. While we're waiting for that, uh, let's go see the burglar proofing problem that we have. Okay, so here we are at the window. Um, as you can see, the the height difference um, between the frame the existing window frame and the burglar proofing uh, is going to be a problem because we don't want to put the netting over this and then uh, there can still be a gap between the, the new frame and the old frame for the mos mosquitoes to come in in order to deal with this i'm going to use this um, self adhesive weather strip which I'm going to put um, in between the, the places where there's a problem and this will bring the level up to the same level so when the frame is on top here it's going to seal there's not going to be a gap and it's going to sort this problem out putting these strips on um, it's self-adhesive, it's very easy, and I'm putting it right on the edge. Uh, now my frame is going to be fine. Putting on top of this, I already cut it. Blend it there. So now you can see there's, there's this foam strip there, and then I skipped a piece, and then all the way down. yeah and i just need to do this bottom strip and the side on this side now the the strips are up everything is level and i've got the frame here and now it's just to to see how it fits Perfect. It seals all around and I think I only need to put one magnet on this side. It will pull it it will pull it tight there and I'm very fortunate that it hooks on the tiles on that side. So I insert it in that gap there and only only one place to attach it here so if i want to open or close the window i just need to open it like this remove the frame close the window and put it back with one magnet um, you can also if you don't have a, a thing like that you can you can add hinges on that side or you can put another magnet I'm going to show you how I'm going to fasten the magnet. Here are those magnets. Um, I already drilled two holes into the, the plate um, for screws. And this side's got a self-adhesive pad. This is the side where I want to add the, the little metal thing. It's going to be somewhere around there. And then at this part, I'm going to uh, screw to the, the window frame. I've screwed the magnet part there. 
uh, bend the bracket a little bit there's a kink in it so that this magnet is the same level as the sponge and if I put this metal piece of metal with the self adhesive tape on top of the magnet and all I have to do now is to peel away this and when it's like that all I need to do is to install the frame on top of that press down and this will stick to the frame so I've got the frame in position putting it putting it in just making sure it's it's the right height and it's level and then I'm pressing down on that bracket so now okay so now you'll see on the back side the metal the metal is attached to the to the frame now I'm going to reinforce it a little bit with some hot glue just to make sure it doesn't come off but there it is if I want to open my window the window is open take my frame now no insects can bother me but I've got the advantage of the ventilation um, thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you to make your own mosquito nets uh, very easily and cheaply